Welcome to Get Rich Education. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. We're going behind the scenes this week as you'll learn how turnkey real estate providers, which are basically professional at scale house fix and flippers, where they find their property and where they get the money to buy them. Interestingly, the answer translates to something actionable that you can do to substantially increase your amount of passive income in a short period of time. We're opening it all up for you today as it's both a behind the scenes show and a solution based show on Get Rich Education. Fortunately for you, Congress has made it possible to get up to $200,000 out of your current 401k or TSP to invest in real estate or your own business, and that's even if you're still working. The thing is, you can get all this money tax-free. The EQRP is your secret weapon. With the CARES Act expiring soon, the EQRP company helps you unleash your retirement funds now. Learn more and text message QRP in all capital letters to 72000. You're listening to the show that has created more financial freedom than nearly any show in the world. This is Get Rich Education. Welcome to GRE from Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York to Brownsville, Texas and across 188 nations worldwide. I'm Keith Weinhold. This is Get Rich Education as we're about to go behind the scenes with how turnkey real estate providers operate. A way to help you understand this is with a consumer profit chain. If you looked in your refrigerator and inside your pantry right now, you would see products, brands like Quaker Oats, Shakita Bananas, Starbucks Coffee, or York Peppermint Patties. Every one of those companies makes a profit. You have, in fact, enabled them to make a profit by having purchased them and understand that you do want all of those brands to make a profit. And why is that? Well, because if they don't, they soon won't be around any longer. That would be bad for you because you must like them by having bought them, so you want them to stick around. And you want good people behind valuable products to make that profit. Let's look at the profit chain. Really, this is what economists refer to as the service profit chain with a hyphen between the words service and profit. The service profit chain. Let's say that you like Starbucks coffee. Before you go out to a Starbucks cafe and buy that coffee, Well, Starbucks had to get cups from a container provider, a provider of coffee cups, who also made a profit. Starbucks had to get their coffee itself from various coffee bean suppliers and espresso makers from espresso machine makers, and each of those companies made a profit. Starbucks added the branding and service to help deliver both a product that you like and an atmosphere, that service that you enjoy being in, in order to make their profit. You want all of those parties to be profitable so that they stay in business. You didn't so much make a profit in this case, but you created a value proposition for yourself on your end of the value chain because to you, that Starbucks espresso was worth the same or more to you as what you paid for it. Now, alternatively, let's say you work for an employer then you're saying that the salary or wage that you're accepting as payment is worth the same or more than that one hour of your time is. That's the spot that you occupy on that profit chain, and you had better want your employer to profit from your arrangement with them, or else your employer will soon be out of business, and you'll soon be out of a job. Well, similarly, you should want turnkey real estate providers to be profitable if you want them to continue to stay in business and do what they do for you, which is sell you a new or renovated property with a tenant already in it, and then they manage that tenant for you long term. And when that's done right, I think that's an amazingly valuable service for us as investors. You're only getting into that arrangement if it's profitable for both you and them. You know what turnkey real estate providers have to do? All the moving parts that they have to operate and manage and all the risks that they have to take. 
They need to find, nurture, and maintain all kinds of relationships to obtain a distressed property in the first place in order to buy that and fix it up. Once they acquire that property, they need to hire and maintain relationships with all kinds of contractors and subcontractors like carpenters, roofers, and mechanics, and installers of all types, and plumbers, electricians, inspectors, code enforcement officers. They need to manage and coordinate the workflow among all of those parties so that everything gets done. The whole time they're fixing the distressed property, they need to pay loan interest and they need to pay property taxes on the property and pay utilities. And they now run the risk of also finding anything unexpected in the home as they're rehabbing it from water damage all the way to having issues that cloud the title. And then for their materials that they're using in the rehab, they have to search which ones work best and they have to have the money to buy materials at scale in order to get the best price and often even warehouse the materials themselves in order to hedge themselves against supply disruptions and on and on. And once the renovation is done, then they have to build systems in order to screen and place tenants and then operate an entire property management division and all of its associated headaches. So turnkey providers have a ton of activities to do and all these parties to coordinate, and I'm only scratching the surface here. And in order for them to do all of this, of course, it's mandatory that they buy a property then for substantially less than what it costs to do all those things that I just described. Well, this acquisition process of buying a distressed property for, say, 30 to 50K and then paying more money to rehab it, and then that provider hopes to sell it later for, say, 100K, well, that all begins because they solve a problem for a distressed buyer in order for them to get that asset in the first place. The woman who I'm going behind the scenes with today to discuss this, her name is Danny Lynn Robeson of Freedom Real Estate Group in Springboro, Ohio. Springboro is just outside Dayton. Danny recently told me a story about how they acquired a distressed property, which just closed about three weeks ago. They had a property in their system from March of this year, and it took them three months of this back and forth between her team and the seller to help buy this distressed house. The owner's name was Rocky. He's about 70 years old. He was trying to sell his mother's house. Rocky has immune deficiency diseases. His words were, I am like a baby that can easily catch any kind of disease. What happened is that Rocky's mother passed away six years ago and the house was passed down to him. And since that time, he's been working on doing renovations to the property himself to try to get it into a good and updated condition for a buyer. However, because of Rocky's health issues, he lost a lot of time. He struggled financially. And he also just didn't have the energy to get the renovations completed either. He had been admitted to the hospital several times due to the immune system concern and a back operation. Ultimately, Rocky could just no longer take on the struggle of renovating his late mother's place. And he just needed to get rid of it and have enough money then to relocate because he wanted to enjoy his life with his son, daughter, and grandkids. Well, it took Danny's, today's guest, it took Danny's team three months of consistent follow-up and nurturing to be able to help out Rocky, the seller, out of his current situation, but she didn't give up and they closed on the property just three weeks ago. So Rocky, that distressed seller, he got what he wanted because he got a lump of cash from today's guest, Danny, and he got rid of a property that wasn't in good enough condition to be financeable either. It could not have been sold to a conventional buyer because of the state of disrepair that the home was in. And you see, a realtor, they're not interested in trying to sell a property like that because for a realtor, it's a lot of work for a low sale price. So because Danny was there to help, she, the turnkey provider, got something that works for her, a win, Rocky, the seller, he didn't have to lose. He got a win too. Now you're going to meet Danny in just a minute here. I love win-win-wins like that. You're listening to Get Rich Education, episode 299. Yes, we are just one week from episode 300 here. 
Coming up on a future show, one of the world's most prominent economists returns with us to give his take on the uncertain economy, housing, inflation, interest rates, and more. This guest was also the very first guest that ever appeared here, like the first ever. He was with us way back in 2014. He's got a lot of really important things to say that are going to impact you. Also, weeks down the road, I've got a segment with you about why money is a taboo topic. This mindset segment is really going to center around, like, now, why is it that people don't talk about their salary? Why is that so secretive? Why has Western society largely come to the consensus where knowing how much money each other makes is, like, cataclysmically bad? We're going to discuss that. And with all that said, I am going to tell you, to the nearest thousand dollars, what the most money is that I ever made from my day job back when I still had one, And why would I tell you that anyway? Well, you're going to learn about all that and more on why money is a taboo topic. That's a few weeks down the road. More episodes coming up on the show here on how to specifically build your wealth, including a lot of things that you'd never thought about before and also really impact you. As for today's show, it's both a behind-the-scenes look and a solution-based show. Let's meet Danny Lynn Robeson, a quality person and a terrific businesswoman. Meet this week's guest. She has been a licensed realtor, distressed property specialist, and note consultant since 2009, but today she serves as the co-founder and CEO of the Freedom Real Estate Group family of companies. They're based in the Dayton, Ohio area. She is also an esteemed Forbes Real Estate Council member with numerous published articles and expert panel features. She is married to Flip Robeson, who is also in the business. She grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, but she moved to Ohio years ago specifically because it is cash flow country. Welcome to Get Rich Education, Danny Lynn Robeson. Thank you so much for having me, Keith. Danny, we've done business for a while, so it's good and feels beyond a do to have you here. What successful business owners do at their core, people like you and Freedom Real Estate Group, is solve problems for others. So to start at the beginning, part of your business is to go out and find a distressed seller of a property, and distressed sellers come in all shapes and forms. Tell us about that seller of that distressed property. Many of the sellers are in situations where there's more rehab needed that a typical buyer of a property that wants to live in it is not going to be able to do it on their own. And so when they approach realtors, realtors will simply say, this is going to be a tough one for me to put on the MLS. Your best buyer is going to be an investor. Then those realtor relationships, they come to somebody or a company like mine, and they tell us about the property. We go visit that seller, and we essentially provide them with a few options on how we could purchase their property and provide a win-win scenario so that they can sell it solve the problem they're having, get the cash that they need, and then we get a property that we can rehab and then turn around and either put it on the market or turn it into a rental property. Yeah. Now, for example, a person out there might have inherited a home from a deceased parent, and that home can often be in disrepair. And due to that disrepair, that heir of that home has trouble selling it to a typical home buyer. Like you mentioned, the home buyer might not want to do the work. And additionally, because that prospective traditional home buyer would need financing, well, the home often isn't in condition to get conventional financing. The bank won't finance it for that traditional buyer. That's where you come in. And we can say that a home, perhaps in this example that we're going with here, could be worth $100,000. And the problem that you solve for that heir is that you give them a great option by offering them, say, $50,000 all cash, buying it as is, and then you'll see and make sure that the repairs are made so you solve the problem for that heir. That's exactly right. And that is a perfect example. And one that uh, I just encountered recently, there was a gentleman that said, this is such a headache. I'm just uh, frustrated being out of state and not having this property and not seeing the property and not knowing what to do. And we're just a great solution for those uh, types of sellers. And so I'm glad that you brought that up. You've been doing this successfully for a while, so you really create win-wins for people. Tell us more about where you find these properties to begin with. I know that they're in and around Ohio, which is where you're based. Who are the parties that you have these relationships with to help find these properties in the first place? 
we are big on the win-win scenario. No matter what it is that we're doing in business, that is our goal for every relationship that we have. So the people that we find deals from are obviously private parties where we're just doing some direct marketing and we're getting to those people who are in a probate situation or just a foreclosure situation. Anybody that we can help in a way that we can provide cash to help them out of their situation. We also have relationships with bank asset managers who have larger portfolios and we have the capability to buy packages of properties at a time. So they'll give us a better discount because of our relationship with them. We also have relationships with realtors and brokers and then other wholesalers who are investors that don't necessarily buy for themselves. They're out looking for properties where there's a solution that is needed. They know that we'll buy them and so they'll introduce the seller to us. Now you've built all these relationships and you have these systems in place and you have company employees. With this, it means that you can go find good deals on distressed properties. And if you can do this, you would probably want to buy as many as you possibly could. So tell us about where you get the cash to make all cash offers for these distressed properties. Because like I mentioned previously, banks don't want to give loans on properties that are in disrepair traditionally. Exactly right. And that is where private lenders come in. And they are some of our most important relationships. And they're the reason that we have grown as fast as we have. So we develop relationships with investors who sometimes already own cash flowing properties or just have extra cash sitting in a self-directed IRA account or a 401k or just in their bank account or perhaps in the market. And they're not getting as good of a return that they want. And so they meet investors like us who buy on volume. And we're always looking for those relationships because it allows us to buy more than we can with our own cash. So we'll talk to them and tell them about what we do, discuss our company and our history and everything that we've done, and just answer their questions and see if it's a good win-win for them to actually help us fund the deals. And then we do all the work. They just get the passive income of the interest of having a private loan on one of our properties. Yeah. Now, I know that you've been using funds for your flips from private money investors like this since 2015, and you've done close to 300 of these deals now. You, the listener, you're probably used to being a real estate investor on what we call the equity side of a real estate investment, where you're the one going out and getting a 75 to 80% loan from the bank. So you're the borrower there. But in this case, position yourself on the other side of the table. Now you're the lender rather than the borrower like you're used to being. Exactly right. We like to say they're the bank. It's the easiest way for me to have a conversation with somebody about the investment and explaining the note and mortgage and the security behind the process. And once people understand it, they really, really fall in love with this type of passive income where they get to be the bank and they've got the security of knowing how that works. That's exactly it. So that investor lender then thinks of themselves as the bank. And as we know from being borrowers, from being on that borrower side of the table, the bank definitely wants to know that they're going to get paid back. So I guess the question that debt side lenders would want to answer is that just how does that investor lender have assurance that you are paying them back? We have different terms. There's always a note and mortgage that is produced on every single property that we do. We put the borrower in first lien position. What that means is that you're the only borrower on that particular property, so you have full control over how much is invested in that particular deal. We'll look at a deal and we'll say, hey, this one is something that we can sell for $100,000 and the purchase price is going to be about $30,000. We might put another $30,000 in rehab. And so the purchase and rehab combined is 60, but the value is $100,000. So there's still $40,000 of room and margin in there for us to make a whole lot of mistakes, still keep the lender protected, keep us protected. And they're protected by that note and mortgage, which is signed at closing and the mortgage is recorded with the county, just like any other bank mortgage would be. Yeah, that's an important thing to say because you have the turnkey side of the business as well when you go rehabilitate and sell that property to the turnkey investor. So really the genesis of this entire process is you getting a property out of distress, getting a loan from a private lender. And importantly, when we talk about that banker wanting to get paid back, whom is the investor in this case, oftentimes they want to be in a stable place. You're investing in Ohio and other nearby places in the Midwest and South, and it's also a cash flow market. So therefore, when you go to sell the property, often to a turnkey buyer, you are able to be profitable. Absolutely. One of the things that we like to say around here is that Ohio is boring. And it's one of the reasons I moved here. I used to live in (laughs) Texas and Florida and Arizona. And all of those markets have far bigger swings 
Midwest here is very, very stable, more reliable for investments. And so I just love the ability to have such great cash flow and buying power because a $75,000 property will get you seven fifty dollars to $900 in rent. Yeah. And as an investor, I mean, that cash flow is, is phenomenal. And as a private lender, it's really, really great to know that you're investing in a market where it is strong and steady and doesn't see those big swings. Tell us about the type of returns that your private money lenders can expect. We have two levels and we do this on purpose because we want to encourage larger investments. So up to $100,000, our minimum investment is 50, although we do find some properties where we do have purchase prices of 30 and $40,000. So it's okay if we go below 50, but we try to start at that $50,000 mark. For anything under $100,000 that you invest with us is going to be an 8% return. As soon as you commit $100,000 or more, we bump that up to 10%. And when I say commit, it doesn't mean that you have to lend 100,000. What that means is you said, Danny, I have $100,000 available or more. And if you said that, I'm gonna give you 10%. And the reason I do that is because we have a big whiteboard with all of the pipeline of deals that are coming in and we're matching those deals with lenders. So the more capital availability that I have, the easier it is for me to put those deals together. So if I know you have $100,000, but I only need 80, I'm still gonna provide that 10% return because you let me know you have at least $100,000 available. Okay, so that's an 8%. It would be cash on cash return for those that lend 50K to a penny less than 100K. If one invests 100K or more, all of that money is a 10% cash on cash return for that lender. That is correct. Thank you. Yeah, that's a strong return. Well, I want to ask you more about that. What are the upsides? What are the downsides? And who is this for? You're listening to Get Rich Education. We're talking with Danny Lynn Robeson about private money lending. More when we come back. I'm your host, Keith Weinholz. The people that our listeners can't stop talking about are Ridge Lending Group and MLS 42056. They provided you with more loans than anyone. It's where I got my last few loans, and they finance single-family income property up to fourplexes. They're the number one lender for both beginners and veterans. Start your pre-qualification, chat with President Chaley Ridge personally, and you'll end up with your custom plan for expanding your cash flowing portfolio. Start at RidgeLendingGroup.com. Property investors can get killed with maintenance costs. That's less likely when you buy brand new construction. Let me tell you about JWB Real Estate Capital in bustling Jacksonville, Florida. They pioneered the build to rent model where you can invest in new construction, turnkey rental property. That's why JWB was featured on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. To learn more and see inventory, start now at newconstructionturnkey.com. Hi, this is Rich Dad Advisor Garrett Sutton. You're listening to the always valuable Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold. Don't quit your daydream. You're listening to the show that's created more financial freedom for busy people just like you than nearly any show in the world. This is Get Rich Education. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. We're talking with Danny Lynn Robeson about private money lending, the opportunity for you to get a cash on cash yield on your money with real estate as the collateral in a vehicle that is more passive than turnkey real estate investing. Now, of course, Danny, when you sell this property off into a turnkey buyer down the road, you need to be able to pay off the investor returning their principal along with their accrued interest and still have some reasonable profit left over as you are a business. When one makes that loan to you, is the collateral a specific address or a number of addresses? So just tell us more about how that investor lender's money is secured. It is a specific address. So there are multiple lenders that have multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars that they lend to us because of our history and how much business we've done together. Every now and then I'll have a phone call and they say, I've got a hundred thousand because they want the 10%. And then after we do a couple deals, they go, okay, I randomly have another hundred thousand. And then I have another hundred. So we have multiple lenders with hundreds of thousands of dollars that they spend. And I explain it that way because every single loan that they do is one specific address. So we'll send a funding packet and they'll review it real quick. And these days, you know, it's within 24 hours, they're sending back and going, yes, that looks great. That's fine. And so they may have $300,000 with us, and that might be spread against four different properties. But each note and mortgage is one specific address. 
We talked about that before one day, Danny. I said, how does it really work? Like what really happens? And you said, yeah, your typical lender lends 100K. That's something that they often do in order to get that 10% to sort of see how it goes on a project or two. And then as soon as they find out that that goes well, that's when they come in and invest more. Exactly right. And it always makes me giggle. And I've started bringing it up on conversations because I've had one lender start with 100. He came to my office, turned it into two. And within three months, he had $1.5 million. I was like, okay, that's the biggest jump that I've seen so far. But I think people really want to work with you and, and trust you and just understand the process before you know they invest a whole big chunk of money. And so starting with $100,000 seems very reasonable to a lot of people to get a good return at 10%. And then we just learn and continue to grow together. And that's been fantastic for me. Yeah. You often tell that first time lender who is investing 100K, you're like, yeah, I can tell how this is going to go. It's usually pretty (laughs) predictable, but that's a lot of good news. And I know you do have a lot of great testimonials about private money lending there with Freedom. So tell us more about the timeline of a typical project. Typically, we're going to do a six-month term, and what that means is when we create the note and mortgage before closing, it's going to be for 180 days. Now, we just set that term just because we just want to have a standard amount of time that we put on every single project. Now, those projects are typically vacant. They're also typically single-family properties. Though we give a 180-day timeline on the note and mortgage, we're typically in and out of those and closed and sold to the end buyer within 120 days. 45 to 60 of those days are sometimes just simply the loan process. We've gotten very good at buying and getting rehabs done quickly. So you're probably going to be looking at 120 days, even though the note and mortgage will stay 180 days. Now, I will make this one exception because you might have some follow-up questions. We have started to do 12-month terms on larger multifamily properties because we're starting to do four, five, six, seven plexes. That's the biggest that we've gotten so far. And those just simply take longer. Also, when we buy a property that is occupied, then we'll do those 12-month terms. And what has been interesting to me is that my lenders have been saying, sign me up for the 12-month term, please, because they like their money to be sitting in the loan as long as possible. That makes sense to an experienced investor that they would want that 12-month timeline. I imagine a more beginning investor, they might feel safer in the four-month or six-month projects because after that term, whether that would be four months or six months, at that time, your private lender would get return of principal plus return of any accrued interest after four or six months. Or you would at least give them that option or the other option being, I would imagine you would have another project where you could roll it into the next one for them. Absolutely. And that's a good point. Newer investors are very likely going to be put into the 180 day terms. I'm glad that you brought that up. So that's how it would happen. When we're ready to close, our transaction coordinator actually reaches out. And so they would say, hey, we're getting ready to close on this property. Thank you so much for being our lender on this. Here's a payoff statement. Here's how long we've had the loan. Here's the principal balance. Here's the interest. Please double check our math. Essentially at closing, what we want to have happen is we want the money to go back to you because the security is just like a bank. It's a note and a mortgage, which means you have to sign a release of the mortgage saying you did receive your money plus interest back. And that's how the lien is removed from the property for the new owner. So what we do in those cases is you sign the payoff statement, the money is returned to you, and then our transaction coordinator, she is phenomenal. She's already got you lined up and she probably already told you about the new deal two weeks ago (laughs) saying this one's getting ready to, to close. And if you're ready to go ahead and roll those funds into a new project, I have one ready. Would you like to look at it? And so usually by closing, the lender already knows what deal they're going into next and when that closing is. We try to have downtime, downtime as minimal days as possible. That's a great explanation there, Danny. I need to ask you a question before we get too deep into this interview, because sometimes if I ask this at the end of the interview, someone will be like, oh, I listened and that show sounded really good. But then I found out at the end I needed to be accredited and I'm not. So does one need to be an accredited investor in order to get in on these opportunities? And just to define it in general, there are a few caveats here, but an accredited investor is a definition given by the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. And they just say to invest in certain investments, you need to have a minimum minimum annual income of 200K for single, 300K for married filing jointly, or not and, but or a $1 million net worth, single or married, excluding equity in your primary residence. Does one need to be accredited? They do not. In this lending scenario, because it's secured by an individual property with a note and mortgage, you do not need to be accredited to be a lender with us. 
when one thinks about minimum qualifications for getting in on real estate deals, you, the listener, you're used to being the borrower and needing to have a certain credit score and debt to income ratio and reserve requirements for your mortgage loan underwriting, but you don't need to do any of those things. So as long as you have the cash, you qualify. That is correct. Wow. I have never heard it stated that way before. Great point. Well, you brought up earlier how one can fund these deals with cash. I imagine they can use IRAs or even play the home equity line of credit arbitrage game. Absolutely. Yeah. So I always have a list that I go through with everybody. I have cash, self-directed IRA funds, 401k funds, lines of credit, HELOCs, cash value, life insurance. Any liquid source of capital is going to be good for a private lending scenario. Well, could a deal possibly lose money for the investor lender, just like any bank would want to know if they're getting repaid? The investor is a lender in this case. I would imagine that even if the market dipped 5%, that would be a lot for a place like Ohio or a lot for the place like these Midwest and markets in the South. But even if, say, the market dipped 5%, we're talking about the value of the collateral for the lender here, I'm going to imagine that that would probably affect you, Danny, but not the lender so much. So any thoughts there about could a deal possibly lose money? So I always tell everybody there's always risk in any investment that you're going to do, including with me. What's important about working with somebody like me in a company like mine is the history that we have and the volume that we do. So there's never a situation where I want to put a private lender in a situation where they're going to lose money. Why? Because I've grown as big as I've grown because of my private lender relationships. They are so important to me that I value them. I will be the first person to lose money before a lender ever loses money with me. And I provide testimonials. I provide references of this fact. I recently did a recorded an expert panel video and I invited our attorney, our CPA, a private lender, another expert in the self-directed IRA space. And we did it. And one of the things the private lender uh, said, and she's been with me for years, she said, I've referred so many people to Danny Lynn and I have never lost money. None of my private lenders have lost money. And it's because Danny really values the relationships there and her ability to grow her company and the number of deals that she can do. She's the first one to take the loss. The lenders will never take a loss. It doesn't mean that there's not a risk. So don't get me wrong there. But It's important to work with somebody who's got the history and the reputation like we do and the volume behind us because our experience speaks volumes. Yeah, your reputation's grown. Your volume has grown as well because you've been doing these since 2015 and you've done close to 300 deals, but yet you expect to do about 100 just this year alone. Is that about right? That is correct. I am so excited. I want to break that 100 mark. I'm a big goal person. (laughs) So yes, uh, each year we do more and more and it's because our team keeps growing and we keep getting better at what we do and just learning from everything that we go through, through the property rehab and all of that types of thing. Well, as you see these investors place funds with real estate as their collateral for a very predictable 8 to 10% cash on cash return over time, who is that typical investor? Who do you think this is for? I would say it's typically for busy professionals. That's what I've found when I'm talking to people. It is people that understand the power of building wealth through real estate, but they simply don't have the time to do it themselves. And so they want to find a trusting company, a trusting person, a trusting way that they can invest in real estate and feel comfortable with their capital in somebody else's hand and earn a better return than they can put anywhere else. Yeah, that makes sense that this would cater to those busy professionals because really being the lender in this case is even more passive than turnkey real estate investing. And I love turnkey real estate investing for a lot of reasons that I always talk about, often centering around those up to five ways that you're paid. But this situation might be better for somebody else. Maybe you're tapped out on your 10 loans for property, especially now that non-QM loans have gone away for a little while. So rather than your funds sitting idle making 1% or less in a bank account, they can earn a substantial return here and you can potentially still have four to six month liquidity with those funds. And when we talk about passivity for that investor, it's important to know when that investor has that piece of collateral during their lending period, which is tied to a specific address, that lender doesn't have to do things like pay the property taxes, pay the utilities. What's your investor from Los Angeles going to do? Come over and mow the lawn. So you take care (laughs) of all those things for the investor and make it passive. I know that, but tell us more about that. 
we do uh, make it as simple as possible. And I've heard recently a line that says, not many things are both simple and easy, but I believe this is one of those things because we do our best to do everything that we can possibly for you. Your requirement is simply to review the deal, say yes, wire your funds to the title company, and then it, when it's time to close, review the payoff statement and sign the mortgage release. That's literally all we want you to have to do. We want to do the rest of the work for you so that we can make this simple and easy and the most passive investment that you can possibly have. So we do take care of the rehab, we take care of the contractors, we take care of the utilities, all the bills associated with property, maintenance, getting it on the market, selling it, producing and taking care of all the paperwork in the process. That's our job. Well, Danny, I know you and your company have done a remarkable job of providing predictable returns with your private money lending program. Is there any last thing that you'd like to add? Maybe something that I should have asked you about, but didn't think to ask you, what does a prospective lender need to know? Well, that's funny because I sort of knew that you were going to ask the question, but then you asked the question while we were in the middle of the interview. So I said, darn it, Keith, many people don't ask what the risks are really. And it's really about working with that trusted team and having somebody that you can rely on that you know has the experience and history of doing the deals already so that you're not working with a new investor who may be making some very, very big mistakes and may not have the capability to be able to perform on the note. So who you work with, the team that's on the ground, means everything in the world. And that's usually what I bring up at the end of a phone call before anybody else did. But we touched on it twice today. (laughs) You know, Danny, as the listeners listening, for them, this is probably an interesting view into behind the scenes with how a turnkey property operates and how they acquire their property in that timeline all the way through to when you sell a turnkey to an investor. Have you ever at this point had someone that has been both a private money lender and a turnkey investor, both? Yes. Actually, I get on the phone very often. I'm glad that you, but that's what I should have brought up. I get on the phone very often and they're asking me about both options, whether it should be a turnkey, invest in turnkey or do private money. So I ask them, what is your goals? And ultimately, I want to understand what they're aiming to get. Is it just cash flow? Is it cash flow plus appreciation? Do they need their money to be liquid? And all of the answers to those questions allows me to give them recommendations based on what I feel is going to be best for them. We have multiple lenders who have done both so they can meet separate goals and diversify their investments. Yeah, that's really interesting to think about it that way. Well, Danny, you're an experienced operator. You do this in a stable place. I know that you put together a great report about just how private money lending works. A lot of it's laid out in a Q&A type of format. You can get the report at getricheducation.com slash lending if you want to learn more about getting predictable returns with private money lending. And shortly after you read that report, uh, Danny will make available that expert panel video where she's with her attorney and others where she explains more about how this works just in order to help handle any type of questions that you might have. Danny Lynn, thanks so much for coming onto the show. I think this was fantastic and I'm so appreciative for you having me on your show. Yeah, great stuff from Danny. A behind the scenes look at turnkey providers. You can substantially increase your amount of passive income in a short period of time. Now, some people invest passively with, say, a real estate syndication, but oftentimes your money is tied up for five to seven years. With those, there's no long wait for your return of principal here. It's a matter of months, and you're holding substantial value in the collateral which is that property that's being turned into a beautifully rehabbed turnkey property, the turnkey provider wants to hold onto that collateral because not only are they actively adding value to it, yes, they're actually increasing the value of your collateral during that time. It's also expected to have more market value when they're all done than what they put into it. So that is some great collateral. It's a way for you to find your place in that profit chain. Like I talked about earlier, you want it to be lucrative for the provider, just like it is for you. And everyone is aligned when it's a good deal for you. The investor lender, the turnkey provider, and the distressed property owner like Rocky, that example I gave back at the beginning of the show. When that distressed property owner doesn't know how to fix their property and they can't find a buyer because the property is in disrepair, That's where a turnkey provider swoops in and saves the day. And besides solving the distressed owner's problem, they even make the neighborhood better sooner. So it's really another win. And I just love this. This is entrepreneurship where everybody wins. So again, 
your collateral is secured with a specific address. And the way that it's structured is that a six-month term is common. After six months, besides getting your accrued interest, which is your cash flow, you get your entire principal paid back. Or you have a reinvestment option where you could roll the principal forward into the next loan for another property if you so choose. Often it's a wait of a week or less until the next property is ready. You've got to think that today, an 8% return, that's worth more than it is during most times. And why would that be? Well, that's because we're in a low inflation environment. An 8% return minus 2% inflation That is a 6% real return, for example. Imagine if we were in a high inflation environment. Well, then this would be less attractive. With the unprecedented Fed money printing, some think we could be in a higher inflation environment starting about three years from now, and you sure could reevaluate your position three years from now. But usually, with this particular private lender program, you're getting a 10% cash-on-cash return and it's in this low inflation environment. Well, for every 100K invested, this increases your income $10,000 a year, not your equity. Leverage equity is a great thing when you're on the borrower side, for sure, but an increase of $10,000 in annual cash flow, that has more impact than illiquid equity does. That's what you're getting here. So, If you're looking to try out being on the debt side of real estate investing with a hard real estate asset in a stable market as your collateral, and it's a recession-resistant type like residential housing, have that sound collateral coupled with an experienced operator with a great track record like Danny Lynn Robeson at Freedom Real Estate Group. If this sounds interesting and you're in a position to benefit here, you might at least owe it to yourself to get the report. That's how you can learn more. And it also has Danny's contact information. You can do this at getricheducation.com slash lending. This could really be for you if you seek stable, predictable cash flow. Learn more in the report that Danny put together for you at getricheducation.com slash lending. I'm Keith Weinhold, back next week to help you build your wealth. Don't quit your daydream. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.